whenever you have to divide using upper and lower bounds, you have to be extra careful. And let's see why. In this question, we have Nadir runs the length of a pitch of 78.2 meters to one decimal place. He takes 16 seconds to the nearest second, write down an upper bound for his speed in meters per second. Give your answer to one decimal place. For this, talking about speed and time and distance, we're going to need the speed distance time triangle. Don't stop trying, or DST for short, and it looks like this. Distance on top, speed multiplied by time below. In this case, therefore, to work out the speed, we're going to have to do distance divided by time. So how would we work out, in this case, the upper bound for his speed? Many students will simply get the upper bound for the distance and the upper bound for the time, and then divide it. But that wouldn't work. Let me test you on a quick question. What's bigger, one-third or two-thirds? You'd say to me, oh, well, two-thirds is bigger. And you're right, two-thirds is bigger. So whenever we make the top line of a fraction bigger, in other words, the numerator, we make the overall number bigger. So if we want the upper bound here, we want the top line of this fraction to be really big. We want the upper bound. We want to be as big as possible. But let me ask you another question. What's bigger, one half or one quarter? One half or one quarter? Well, you'd say to me, well, a half is bigger. Half a cake is, is a lot bigger than a quarter of a cake. And you're right. So the denominator has to be as small as possible for the overall fraction to be as big as possible. Notice 2 is smaller than 4, which makes the fraction bigger. So for the denominator, for the bottom line, we want that to be as low as possible in order for the overall number to be as big as possible. To cut a long story short, when you're looking for the upper bound of a fraction, you want the top line to be as big as possible and the bottom line to be as small as possible. In this case, we want the distance to be as big as possible and the time to be as small as possible. And it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? To run really fast, you want to go a great distance in a very short time. So you want your huge distance in a very low amount of time. What is the upper bound of 78.2 meters to one decimal place? My quick tip for finding the upper bound is to write the number, so in this case 78.2, and then write one decimal place above that and one decimal place below that. The only reason we're doing one decimal place is because it told us that it was rounded to one decimal place. So we do what's one above that would be 78.3. One below that would be 78.1. That does not mean these are the upper bounds. It's just a useful way of working out what the upper bound is. That line halfway between them, that's like the borderline. If you go any above that, you round to 78.3, which is wrong. Any below this line, and you'd round to 78.1, which is again wrong because it's 78.2. So these borderlines are your upper and lower bound. What's halfway between 78.2 and 78.3? It would be 78. A quick tip as well for upper and lower bounds is that it almost always ends in 5. You kind of know you're wrong if you're ending in 0.4 or something like that. 78.25, halfway between like 20 and 30 is 25. So we've got the upper bound for the distance, 78.25, but now we want the lower bound for the time. It's 16 seconds. So I go one above, which is 17, and one below, which is 15. But this time we're looking for the lower bound. So we look for the floor, which is here. Halfway between 16 and 15 is 15.5. So 15.5 is our lower bound. Again, you notice ending in fives. So we've got the upper bound for the distance, the lower bound for the time. Now we just need to divide it. 
distance divided by time, 78.25 divided by 15.5, which is 5.048. Give your answer to one decimal place. So that would be 5.0. The speed is 5.0 meters per second. Let me just show you the number one mistake I see with bounds, especially with division in bounds. What people do is they just get the upper bound of both numbers. That's the number one mistake. They don't realize that the denominator has to be the lower bound. Another mistake is to simply use the numbers straight away, so 78.2 and 16, divide it, and then get the upper bound of the answer. But both of those methods would be wrong. What you need to do is get the upper bound for the top line, the lower bound for the bottom line, and then just write your answer. You don't use the original numbers and then round your final answer. So here we have 5.0 meters per second. It's a little bit complicated, so let's try one more example just to have a bit of practice. Clear ourselves some space. How about this question? Let's do it down here. Gold has a density of 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed, and that's real. That's actually what the density of gold is to one decimal place. A bracelet is made from 12.43 grams of solid gold to four significant figures, SF for short. Work out the lower bound for the volume of the bracelet in centimeters cubed, giving your answer to two decimal places. We're gonna to need to know the mass density volume triangle. Again, a very useful triangle to know, and it looks like this. You have mass on top and D times V mass, density, and volume. If you weren't sure, the 12.43 of grams, that's the mass part of it. But we're looking for the volume, so how do we get the volume? The volume is mass divided by density. And we're looking for the lower bound. What's smaller, one-third or two-thirds? One-third is smaller, so you want the top line to be as small as possible. What's smaller, one half or one quarter? One quarter is smaller. So to get the smallest possible fraction, you want the bottom line to be as big as possible, because four is bigger than two. It's just the reverse of getting the upper bound. So when dividing, you have to be very careful about making sure you're getting the right combination. For the lower bound, you want low on top, upper below. For the upper bound, you want up on top and low below. Let's do that then. What's the lower bound for the mass of 12.43? Well, there's 12.43. What's one above that? 12.44. One below that? 12.42. We're looking for the lower bound, so we go halfway between the bottom two. And because we know it's going to end in 5, we can see it's going to be 12.425, halfway between the 30 and 20. That is the grams of gold. Let's write that over here. What about the upper bound for the density? Well, it has a density of 19.3. So let's write 19.3. Above it, 19.4. Below it, 19.2 and we're looking for the upper bound. So let's write a line between the top two. And can you guess what that line would be? Halfway between 30 and 40? 35, so that's 19.35. That's the density. Now we do mass divided by density. So 12.425 divided by 19.35, mass divided by density, and you get 0.64 to two decimal places, 0.64 centimeters cubed equals 0.64 centimeters cubed for the bracelet, very tiny bracelet. And that's how to do upper and lower bounds when you're using division.